Okay, we're going to talk scrap quilts, which is one of my favorite topics. And I had a question on the Nine Patch a Day group that said, how do you choose your fabrics for your scrap quilts? It seems like it's a little bit different than just anything out of your scrap bag. And um, anything out of your scrap bag works, but there are some guidelines that I can give you to go along with it. But first, we have to talk about what a scrap quilt is. The one that you see on the wall behind me is my pattern from, I think it's the second book that I wrote, which is called Select Six, and that's the quilt that's on the wall there that you can see on the cover. And it was done in my quilt shop when I had my quilt shop as what we used to call the $5 quilt. You paid $5 for your first block and then you made that block. We gave you the fabric and it was just one of these small six inch blocks. You brought it back in the next month and if you had done your homework you got your next block for free now all the setting all of the everything else that goes around here was not included in that five dollars but um, it was a great fun program to run in the store and this is one of the um, ones that we did so these are all six inch blocks and they are set on point in nine inch squares and then the blocks that go in between are one inch nine patches and there are five of those that make up the setting blocks. Now it changes a little bit as it gets out towards the borders and there are setting triangles around the outside edge. But I don't think you're going to find that book available anywhere unless you find it on the secondary market somewhere. Um, I may have a few copies and if I do I'll put them up in my um, Etsy store and I'll put a link to them. But before we talk about what should be in your um, scrap quilt, we have to talk about how you define a scrap quilt. I looked up the definition a while ago and on the internet I found one of the quilting associations had the definition that if it was going to be in a judged show and it was in a category that was designated as scrap quilts, in order to qualify it had to have at least 75 different fabrics in it. Now this one would would qualify and I'm not sure if the judge actually counts those out but it means a scrap quilts are normally defined as quilts that are made from leftover fabrics from another project. So if you went and bought a charm square pack and cut it up and made a quilt out of it that would be a quilt that could have a lot of fabric in it, but it wouldn't be a scrap quilt because those charm squares were designed to go together. They were curated by the designer of the fabric. So it's really not a scrap quilt. A scrap quilt has to have lots of fabrics from different manufacturers, sometimes different eras, and a lot of times totally different styles. Now there's a difference between scrap quilts and charm quilts. So a scrap quilt has a variety of different fabrics in it, but it can be any pattern at all. Any pattern. Like this one is a pattern that's from a book, but it can also be something like a log cabin quilt. So let me show you my log cabin scrap quilt. Now this is also a scrap quilt because this is a log cabin quilt, and as you can see, these are eight inch blocks and they are all made up of entirely different scraps. It doesn't matter. There's like not a red in the same position or anything like that. It's done with the curvy log cabin tool from Creative Grids that was designed by Jean Ann Wright. This pattern is a cut loose press pattern and it's called carousel. Now this is a scrap quilt and it's just one that where whatever I pulled out of the basket, that's what went in next. But the difference is it's not just any fabric. These are all batiks, including all of the creamy ones that are right here. These are all scraps as well. So they're all different cream batiks, but it's not a charm quilt because a charm quilt is one pattern repeated over and over and over again. So this one doesn't qualify as a charm quilt because all of the logs are different sizes. Now this quilt would be considered a charm quilt by many people, not by a purist though, because 
It is a charm quilt in the sense that all of the triangles are exactly the same, whether they're a background triangle or one of the fabric triangles. But this uh, triangle measures five and a half inches. So that's a pretty big charm. Most charm quilts are smaller size pieces, but they it does fit the definition of it's only one single shape repeated over and over again. Now, the other reason this one doesn't qualify as a charm quilt is that it's really a collection quilt. This was done with a batik collection that is all pastels. And so it all came from the same group of fabrics. So there's even uh, three of the exact same peach right here. There's two greens right here. So the variety of fabric does not fit the charm quilt or the scrap quilt definition. Now charm quilts, are fabulous scrap quilts, but normally they're made with some shape, smaller size, that fits together. For example, you're all familiar with a grandmother's flower garden shape, correct? That's normally done English paper piecing. This happens to be a plexiglass template, but this shape, repeated over and over again, makes the grandmother's flower garden type quilt. Pyramid quilts, actually any triangle works. This is a triangle that fits inside a square, but an equilateral triangle will make a beautiful charm quilt. Tumbler quilts. So it's a kind of a chopped off triangle. You can do a, a tumbler quilt in multiple sizes, but usually the smaller size. So this size or smaller, which is about cut three and about three and a half inches tall, smaller than that for charm quilts. There's also some other interesting shapes like this one, which is a kite shape. So you see the kite shape there. These fit together and they will tessellate. So they will interlock with one another with no other shape, just this one to make an entire quilt. Apple cores are a great charm quilt. That's also a scrappy quilt. So an apple core shape, they go this way, then this way, then this way, and they're sewn together on the curves. So any of those shapes would make beautiful charm quilts as long as they have one shape and that's it. Now, there's also some purists involved that say your charm quilt has to have unique fabrics in it. In other words, no repeats. So this one definitely doesn't qualify because it's got way too many repeats. But if you were going to make, say, an apple core quilt, every one that you cut would have to be a totally different fabric. So it could be the same print in a different color, but it has to be a different fabric. Now those are really just the purists that feel that way. A lot of people define them different ways. And those definitions vary by the region of the country that we're in. My store in Pennsylvania was between, to the east, Pennsylvania Amish, and to the west, Ohio Amish. And they had different definitions between how these would, um, patterns would work and what was really considered to be in that group. So if you're going to enter a quilt and you want it to be a scrap quilt and you want to enter it as a charm quilt, find out what that governing body is defining the charm quilt as. So charm quilts, are scrap quilts, but scrap quilts are not always charm quilts. So now that we have the definition down, let's take a look at how I put my fabrics together. We're gonna to start with this piece. This is a quilt top that I inherited from my Aunt Jean when she passed away. And it is a scrap quilt right out of the scrap basket. She was looking for a way to just use up some of her fabric stash, and so she asked for a pattern. I sent her this one, which is Pops A Lot. It's one of my single page patterns, and it's done with two and a half inch strips. And I knew she had a large fabric stash, so this is what she began, and she never finished it. And I think I know why she never finished it, because she wasn't particularly fond of it. This is what she would refer to, and as I've um, adapted as my saying as the dog's breakfast. It's whatever scraps were left over, you threw them into the dog bush, dog's bowl, is what she said growing up. So therefore, this is whatever scraps were, throw them into the quilt. 
This quilt has everything in it. It's just a top, but it's got 30s fabrics in it. It has some contemporary polka dots in it. It has, um, there's some Nancy Halverson Christmas fabrics in here. So there's everything that you can imagine in this quilt top. So there's no coordination between color, between style, between, the only thing it has in common is they're all regular cotton fabrics. That's it. There are no batiks in here. There are, um, actually I don't think there's any digital prints in here. They're all just regular cotton prints. Now, um, this appeals to a lot of people. A lot of people, this is just, this is their thing. They really enjoy this. Um, I like my scrap quilts to be a little bit more curated. Now, if this is the type of scraps you have and you say, but I don't have enough scraps to make an all blue scrap quilt. Well, there's things that you can do. I think Bonnie Hunter is pretty much the queen of making these kinds of fabrics go together. I think I'm pretty sure it was Bonnie that coined the phrase, um, if you think a fabric is ugly, it's just not cut small enough. So cutting your fabric down even smaller so that you can't really tell what era it's from, you're just reading the color. Bonnie separates hers into lights, mediums, and darks. So she's really worried about the value of the color, not necessarily what it is. I have seen quilts that Bonnie has made where she put Y2K fabric, teddy bears, and Easter bunnies all in the same block. So let's take a look at some of Bonnie's quilts so you can see what those wild scrap quilts look like if the pieces are smaller. Now you can see by Bonnie's quilts that small, small pieces make beautiful quilts. And in, if you're cutting them small enough, you can put anything into a scrap quilt, absolutely anything, and they'll be beautiful. But they are pretty small pieces. I prefer to work with a little bit larger piece, and therefore I style my quilts a little bit different. This one is a scrap quilt, so it is called Baby Chains, and some of you will be real familiar with this project because we've done it in the um, Nine Patch a Day group before, but it's one of my single page patterns, and it's um, each one of these squares is made of the same fabric, and I consider it a scrap quilt because they're not all from the same collection. They're all from the same style, but they're not from the same collection. So to get my scrap quilts to look more coordinated, I separate my fabrics into different groups. This is the group that I refer to as home deck fabric. Um, it's, it's regular cotton, quilting cotton fabric, but the colors and the style and the prints that go in it are those warm, toasty colors, cozy colors, ones that are really easy to live with. So navy blue, hunter green, cranberry, in that range of colors. And they're not a true color. They're not the color that, um, if you think of that original box of 16 crayons, if you pulled red out, it wouldn't match the red. It wouldn't match the blue in here. All of these have um, had a little bit of beige, a little cream added to them so that they're not as true color. They're off that true color a little bit. And so it makes them a little bit warm and toasty colors. So this looks very much like, and there's probably a bunch in here that are Kim Deal fabrics. And there's the Kim Deal, Primitive Gatherings, even some of your Civil War, all of that sort of genre of fabric they all will go together in the same scrap quilt and look beautiful together. I find that I like them almost always with a cream or a tan background, not with a white. You certainly don't want an optic white that would be a really bright white. And they generally don't go very well with gray because it's a different, they have a beige undertone, so they look better with a creamy background fabric. So. Warm and toasty or home deck colors is one way that I separate my fabrics. Now, are all of them that? Not necessarily. I mean, there's purples in here, there's some golds, there's different greens in here, this yellow one that's up here. There are some other ones, but none of them um, clash with this 
style of fabric. So let's look at some other styles that you might pick out. I think this um, style of fabric is pretty obvious. This is, we're just going to call it Free Spirit. Free Spirit is the fabric company that produces these fabrics. And they're CAFE, they're um, Philip Jacobs, Brandon Mobley, um, th there's a whole line of designers, including Tula Pink falls under that genre of Free Spirit fabrics. These fabrics are generally bright colored. They're, um, in Tula's case, there, some of them are even neon. So those all go together. It doesn't matter if you bought them for the last 25, 30 years. They're all going to kind of go together in the same quilt. So while they might look like they came from the same collection, they didn't, okay? This is my bin of just Free Spirit scraps here. And I can go through and pull out, in this case, I took everything that was pastel -y that had a pink behind it. Um, but you, I could also do it with blues and purples. I could do it with other colors. So I not only picked the type of fabric, these Free Spirit Brights, but I also then narrowed my color palette for this particular quilt into um, things that were in the pastel range and things that all contained a pink. So that's the way this quilt was made. Now I have this exact same quilt made with batiks and there's a one color in the center and one color around the outside edge. So it doesn't mean you can't choose whatever works for you to do the same quilt pattern. This is a, a eight pointed star, so it's like a lone star and it's done with the diamond dimensions ruler from Creative Grids. This is also a free spirit quilt. So this is the same style of quilting fabric. So it's all bright, bold colors. They all look much better with white or gray, but they don't look as great with creams or tans. So they're all still really bright fabrics. And there's other fabrics besides ones that were manufactured by Free Spirit in here. There's some Moda in here. There's some uh, in the beginning in here. There's lots of different things. And every color under the rainbow is in here. Everything. I used everything that you can possibly think of. There are um, pastels in here, there's brights in here, there's reds in here, and pinks in here. There's everything you can imagine. And the reason that this one works is because the pieces are smaller. So the smaller you cut the pieces, the more variety you can have in your fabric colors. Also, this one is navy blue background. A lot of times people think that they have to have a black background or a white background with these really bright fabrics. You don't. You can have any color you want, but you want to make sure that this is a blue that you would find in that first crayon box of just 16 colors. It's a, a royal blue or a navy blue. It's not a dusty blue. It's definitely a true blue color. So that's why it works with all of these bright fabrics. This is another example of a scrap quilt that was done using a, a style of fabric as the basis. So the outer border of this fabric and most of the centers of the baskets are um, from a designer called Robin Pandolf, I believe. So I think these were, these were older mode of prints. I'm pulling these out of my stash of quilts. And this works together because most of the fabrics that are in here are from that style, but not all. So that's what makes it a scrap quilt because in the, like this basket right here, there are some Sandy Gervais prints. There are some very delicate prints that were actually contemporary prints, but they had very delicate lining on them and the pink worked with it. Um, down here, we've got some Civil War stars in the basket. So there's lots of different genres of fabric, but there's also a continuity to them because they all go together in the same color palette. This one's a little bit odd for me because it actually has three different colors, four if you count the background, but you've got a background color and then there are pink and blue and green baskets. And normally I don't work with this many colors in a scrap quilt. I like to kind of narrow them down. If it's not totally scrappy, 
Then I like to narrow my color focus down and just use lots of fabrics in that same colorway. So let's take a look at a few of those. So two color quilts is the narrowest that you can possibly get when you're doing a color selection for your scrap quilts. This is a red and cream instead of a red and white. I chose the cream colored background, has a little tiny print on it, and I chose this cut fabric to go in my background because of the border print that I had selected. So it has a cream colored background. So rather than red and white, I went red and cream. Now, all the reds that are in here are from a variety of different places, and I think you can see on camera that they are lights and darks. They don't shade from light to dark. They're just scrappy. Whatever size pieces I had, that's the piece that I used. A lot of people will say, well, I don't think I have enough, um, or the blues that I have don't go together, or the greens don't match. Well, if you pull out four or five different fabrics, start to pull them out, you go, but they don't go together. Well, four or five may not go together, but 15 or 25 will eventually start to blend. So if you think your reds are a little too red or a little too orange or a little too something, keep adding more of that same color to it if you're going to do a two color quilt, because the more you have in the variety, the better your scrap quilt will look. Many of you are going to recognize this quilt because this is my watermelon quilt. That You can find the instructions for this project in the file section on our Nine Patch a Day Facebook page. If you happen to just find us on YouTube and you're not a member of the Nine Patch a Day, you're welcome to join us. It's a private Facebook group, so you have to answer a question. And when you ask to join, Facebook will ask you the question, where do you live? And then answer the question with your state, your country, you can answer it however you like, and then you'll get admitted in. And then on Sunday evenings, I post a video where I answer your questions. So you have a chance during the week to ask questions, and I answer them on Sunday nights. This whole video is a result of the fact that someone asked, how do you choose fabrics for your scrap quilt? So this is the watermelon project that's in the files on that Nine Patch a Day Facebook page. So this is a scrap quilt, and it's also a complementary color scheme. Red and green are complements on a color wheel. So anything that's directly across from one another on the color wheel, so blue and orange, purple and yellow, red and green, are complementary colors. This, if you were paying attention earlier, is also a charm quilt. One square exact same size, the entire quilt is made up of that one unit. So that makes it a charm quilt. Now each one of my reds is not unique. There's a huge variety in here. In fact, some from the last quilt that you saw, but um, they are not individual. There's like not, there's duplicates in here, in other words. So you, you'll see polka dots and polka dots here. But it's still a charm quilt in my book. Now, your other options for choosing if you want to use the color wheel are to use triadic, which would be any three colors that uh, work on the color wheel, so yellow, red, and blue, or green, orange, and purple would be the two basic ones that you would be able to have. I don't happen to have any scrap quilts made in those colors because triadic is just not something that appeals to me. So if that's something that appeals to you, you can consider that. Now, in the complementary scale, when you have complementary colors, that green border makes this quilt look redder. It makes those reds really pop. So if you're making an all blue quilt and it just doesn't seem like it has enough life to it, add its complement, which is orange. It doesn't have to be pumpkin orange. It just has to be something in that range of, it could be a darker, deeper, rusty color that you add to it. Or maybe you want to consider that as a border around the outside edge that will really pull all of those colors and make that quilt pop. So this is my favorite kind of scrap quilt. This, on the color wheel, would be considered an analogous quilt. So if you have just the red and white, that's a monochromatic quilt. The red and green is a complementary quilt. As I said, I really don't have a triadic 
to, example to show you, but this one would be analogous. So analogous are colors that touch on the color wheel, and I use the greens, blues, into purples. You could use the reds, oranges, and yellows. You could use the orange, yellow, and green. Any three or more colors that touch on the color wheel are considered an analogous color. And the reason I'm giving you these tips or this information is because some people need a, a guideline or a rule to follow when they're picking some things out. So rather than just go to your stash and go, well, I don't know what goes together, you want to separate your fabrics into different colors, groups like warm colors, pastel colors, or styles like the um, free spirit styles or the batik styles or the civil warish or what I call the warm and toasty colors. So this particular quilt works because it's all in the blues and greens. It is right out of my scrap bag. One of the things about this quilt though is that it's all batiks, 100% batik fabrics. So the background is a batik and it's all the same, including the borders are the same batik used in the background. But every other piece in here was right out of my scrap bag. So they're all batiks, they came from different collections, so it qualifies as a scrap quilt. Now it's not as difficult to make as you think. This is called a hunter's star pattern. And I actually used the AccuQuilt die for the Go machine, the one that die cutting machine. And they have a die called Hunter Star and it cuts these pieces for you. But the block is actually this unit right here. So when those go together, it forms this star. But you make a light side, so it's a light triangle, and then this piece with two dark diamonds. Then you make a dark side with two light diamonds. And as they rotate around, they'll form the stars for you. So it's really not as difficult to put together as you think. The fun part about this quilt as a scrap quilt is that you make these um, individual triangles and then you can rotate them and mix them all up. Because when you're making a scrap quilt, you want to make sure that your color is all over. You don't want all of the green clustered up in that one end. There's more down here so that it's and it moves your eye around the quilt. I highly suggest when you're making a scrap quilt that you just make the blocks. Don't put them together until you've got all the blocks for your quilt made. Because if you get excited and want to see how it looks and you start and put rows of blocks together, then as you collect more scraps, some fabrics will only be in that area and they won't be down here. So you want to make all of the blocks and then arrange your blocks so that you can spread your um, colors out throughout your quilt. That's the way that I found is the best way to get my fabrics in uh, motion throughout my quilt. Now this quilt is a wall hanging size quilt and it's actually um, one that I did a long time ago called No Mud in My Garden. And the quilt actually, the top actually ended here. I went back and added a pieced um, scrappy border to it and then a pieced border and a solid border to the outside edge. But this is a scrap quilt that's right out of my batik scraps. I just used all of the bright ones in these colorways to create the flowers. And this quilt is made using the hexagon trim tool because each one of these flowers is actually a hexagon. Some of them do not look like a perfect hexagon because I've clipped the corner using some green so that it gives it a little bit more distorted effect. So if you take a look at them, they are all actually perfect hexagons and they are the six inch size from the hexagon trim tool. They're set together with pieced, scrap pieced, random scrap pieced equilateral triangles that go in between them and the whole thing is put together in rows. So you can use any ruler that you happen to have as your template for crumb piecing or scrap piecing so that you can make unique scrap quilts. They don't all have to follow a pattern. Now many of you have seen um, my placemats. This is a set of placemats that I have. So these are crumb pieced with a pattern. So I designed the Scrap Crazy templates for creative grids. So if you look at the template, it was all crumb pieced together. 
but then once they were pieced, I used the templates to cut them out. So this is the A shape in the Crazier 8's template set right here. So that's A, B, a little piece of C there, D and E here. So I made the crumb pieces, used the templates to cut them out, and then put them back together again. And once again, this is all free spirit style, what I call these brights. But there's everything in here that's not just from free spirit. It's whatever worked in this color palette to go together. Now the other piece that I have is crumb piecing. And crumb piecing for this particular one, a lot of you have seen this runner. Um, it has these little black bars in it. And if you take a look at it up close, and I've shown this before, but um, I did a quilt which has these three pieces sewn together or these three pieces sewn together in strips. So I stripped my scraps together and when I trimmed them to size, these are all the little end cuts off of the end. So I just started putting them together and fitting them so that they would mesh back together again and created my own length of fabric so that I could make a table runner long and thin like this. So it's a random piece. So your scrap quilts can be any size. They can be planned or unplanned. They can have a pattern or no pattern at all. I really enjoy making uh, scrap quilts because I enjoy all of the fabrics in my stash. And the more of them that I can get into one quilt, the happier I am. But I also personally prefer to curate them so that the colors that are in them and the style that's in them and the way that they look goes together rather than the random dog's breakfast. Now that's not to say that there won't be a random dog's breakfast in my future, but if I choose to do it that way, I'm going to use Bonnie Hunter's theory and cut those pieces pretty small. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the quilts from my stash and you got a better handle or some inspiration to go create your own scrap quilt. And then don't forget to show them to us on the nine patch a day.